Hello, grade 12s. In a short while, we will join Diasha as she introduces the double angle identities for sine and cos to her students, Michelle and Debojo. She proves the formulae and then makes some deductions. Let's have a look. Once again, Michelle and Debojo are standing by to help us investigate these and other formulas. Let's cross over and see if they're ready first. Hey guys, are you ready to begin today's lesson? Hi, Diasha. Hey there, yes, we're ready to go. I've got a new challenge for you. Well, I'm up for a challenge. Me too. Okay, what happens to the formulas for the sine and cosine of alpha plus beta if alpha equals beta? In other words, if the two angles are identical. I think I'll do the sine one first. If alpha equals beta, then I just replace each beta with an alpha. This side is sine 2 alpha, and I guess that these two products are actually like terms, so I can add them together, giving me 2 sine alpha cos alpha. Hey, that's pretty neat. Yes, it is, and you'll find it really useful in solving equations and proving identities. Now, try doing the same in the formula for cosine alpha plus beta. Watch out though, there are three possible answers in this case, which all look different, but actually are all the same. Three answers? Yep, that's right. That sounds pretty odd, but I think I'll have a go. If alpha equals beta, cosine alpha plus beta becomes cosine two alpha. And that will be equal to cosine alpha times another cosine alpha, minus sine alpha, times another sine alpha. And that can be written as cosine squared alpha minus sine squared alpha. How's that? Well done. But can you think how the right-hand side could be written differently? For a moment there, I thought the right-hand side was one. But the sine between the cosine squared and the sine squared terms is a minus and not a plus. And that wouldn't make sense, because the cosine of 2 alpha wouldn't always be 1. Good thinking, Michelle. You're on the right track. Can you use the identity sine squared alpha plus cosine squared alpha equals 1? Can you manipulate it somehow to fit your equation? I'm sure we can. If we subtract cosine squared alpha from both sides, we'll get sine squared alpha equals 1 minus cosine squared alpha. And if we subtract sine squared alpha from both sides, we'll get cosine squared alpha equals 1 minus sine squared alpha. Right, and if we use the second one of those equations in the formula for the cosine of 2 alpha, what do we get? Let's replace sine squared alpha by 1 minus cosine squared alpha, which I'd better put in brackets. And then working out the brackets, I get cosine squared alpha minus 1 plus cosine squared alpha. Collecting like terms gives me 2 cosine squared alpha minus 1. If we use the third version of the identity, we'll end up with something with sine squared in it. Good guess. We will end up with cosine 2 alpha equals 1 minus 2 sine squared alpha. So, sine 2 alpha can only be replaced by 2 sine alpha cosine alpha. But when we come across cosine 2 alpha, we have a choice of the three options. Cosine squared alpha minus sine squared alpha, or 2 cosine squared alpha minus 1, or 1 minus 2 sine squared alpha. How do we decide which one to use? Let's see if you can work this out yourself. I'm going to give you an equation to solve, and I want you to decide which of the three will make your working simpler. Here's the equation. Find the general solution for the equation sine squared x minus 2 sine x equals cosine 2x. Let's look at our options. If we use the first form of the identity, we'll get the right-hand side with cosine squared and sine squared. The second version gives us cosine squared on the right-hand side. And if we use the last version, 
will get sine squared on the right hand side. Good work. Now, which of the three is going to be easier to carry on with? Well, uh, the third looks more promising because there are only two sines and sine squared on both sides. I can simplify it to 3 sine squared x minus 2 sine x minus 1 equal to 0. That looks like it can be factorized. That's it. The sine x term is the key. So go ahead and solve for x. Okay, here goes. I need two brackets. The numbers are easy. It's 3 and 1. And 1 here and here. So let's see. Wait. So that's sine here and here. I'll need a plus in the first bracket and a minus in the second bracket to make sure the middle term minus 2 sine x will be negative. Sine x is minus a third or 1. I'm going to need my calculator for the minus 1 third. But the 1 is simple. That part gives me x equals 90. Remember that it can also be 90 degrees plus k times 360 degrees for k in the integer. Sine x usually has two possible basic angles. Why do you think this answer gives only one? Well, for sine, the two basic angles are in the first and second quadrants. The two possibilities are the angles given on the calculator and 180 degrees minus the angle. But in this case, 90 and 100 and 80 minus 90 both come to an answer of 90 degrees. Right, we dealt with sine x equals 1. Now, let's get back to the rest of the solution. Minus a third is not the sign of a special angle, like minus 30 or 45 degrees. So let's work it out on a calculator. 1 divided by 3, change the sign to a negative, inverse, sign, gives you an answer of negative 19,47. I'll round that off to 5. And I won't forget to add k times 360 degrees, for k is an integer. Negative 19 and a half will be in the fourth quadrant. So now we still need the answer that could be in the third quadrant, where sine is also negative. So it can also be 180 degrees plus 19,5. And that's 199,5 degrees. Plus k times 360 degrees. That was a long sum with many steps. Let's take another look at what we did. You were asked to find the solution to this equation. You used one version of the trig identity for cos 2x to get an equation with only sine and sine squared in it. You simplified this equation to get a quadratic and then factorized. Sine x equals 1 gives us a basic x value of 90 degrees. Sine x of minus one third, we worked out values for x of minus 19,5 and 199,5. We also noted the other possible angles that are equal to x plus k times 360 with k an integer. I have one more identity for you to do. Be careful because this identity has exceptions. By that I mean that although the statement of equality is true for almost all values of the variable, there are some exceptions. Can you suggest what the problem values might be? Sine x and cosine x are all defined for all values of x, so that can't be an issue. Perhaps we need to examine values of x for which one of the denominators is zero. The identity won't be valid if either cosine 2x is 0 or cosine x minus sine x is 0. So if the angle 2x equals 90 degrees plus k times 180 degrees, the identity is not valid. That's when x is 45 degrees plus k times 90 degrees. So the identity is not valid for 45 degrees 
and minus 45 degrees or for 135 degrees or minus 135 degrees and so on. Great stuff Michelle. Now what about when cosine x minus sine x is equal to zero? Adding sine x to both sides and then dividing both sides by cosine x, we get tan x equals 1. This will be true when x is 45 degrees plus k times 180 degrees. And substituting integers for k, we get 45 degrees minus 135 degrees, 225 degrees and so on. Do you see that these exclusions are similar to the first ones you worked out? So do we only need to consider one of the denominators? No, you will need to work out the exclusions based on each denominator separately. Oh, okay, I see that now. Back to the question, now that we know which values to exclude. Can you prove that for all other values of x, the left hand side equals the right hand side? Let's try it out, Michelle. I can see that I'll need double angle identities because the equation uses x's and 2x's. Sine 2x can only be 2 sine x cosine x, but I'll need to find the easiest version for cosine 2x. That's not serious. If you choose unwisely, you might just need an extra line or two in your proof. Well, this time the numerator already has both sine and cosine in it. And the right hand side also contains both sine x and cosine x. I think we should try replacing cosine 2x by cosine squared x minus sine squared x. But now I'm stumped. What about factorizing the denominator? You mean as the difference of two squares? I could do that, but I don't see how it will help. Look at the right hand side and you might get a clue. Well, I don't see it yet, but let me factorize anyway. That would give me cosine x plus sine x times cosine x minus sine x in the denominator. And does that show any promise? Not really, but except that one bracket is what I need to end up with. So, the other bracket needs to cancel out somehow or another. You're absolutely right. The trick to use is to write the 1 in the numerator as sine squared x plus cosine squared x. But that would make the numerator more complicated, not simpler. It might seem like that at first, but just try it and see what you come up with. So I'll replace the 1 and I get this. I can't see how that helps. And what if we rearrange the terms so that the cosine squared x is the first term? Cool, now I see it. It's a perfect square. It factorizes to cosine x plus sine x times another cosine x plus sine x. And the complications disappear because the cosine x plus sine x factor cancels. And we get the right hand side as required. Wow, I've never complicated an expression before to solve a problem. The basic identity sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1 is useful in solving trig equations. We usually use it to replace the sum of the squares by a 1. But sometimes you also need to replace the 1 with sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. Thank you for joining us. Practice what you have learned by doing the questions in the advanced trigonometry task video. You'll also be able to learn more about trigonometry on our website www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.